apparently toward the end of 2023, the idea that bananas are a big smoothie no-no went viral based on a TikTok video from somebody who goes by the handle Distilled Science. And I, I don't know anything about Distilled Science. I'm not a TikToker. But apparently this person has amassed more than 500,000 followers by putting on a lab coat and giving scientific advice in bite-sized videos. And unfortunately, at least in this case, that advice is incorrect. So what appears to have happened is that Distilled Science saw a study published in the scientific journal Food and Function. And according to his video, he just loves fruit smoothies with bananas and berries and yogurt and protein powder. And this paper was concerning to him because it suggested that having bananas in your smoothie destroys the good polyphenols that come from other fruits and vegetables. And I'll do a deep dive into the study and what they actually did. Uh, but for those of you who like TikTok-sized content, I'll just give you the punchline. So this all comes from a paper that was entitled Impact of Polyphenol Oxidase on the Bioavailability of Flavin-3 Alls in Fruit Smoothies a controlled, single-blinded crossover study. And what this paper actually showed was that if you grind up a banana in your smoothie, mix it with a certain type of polyphenol along with other fruits and vegetables, and let it sit at room temperature for an hour, which I doubt anyone would actually do, that will likely result in at least one type of polyphenol being converted into something else, which may or may not have any impact on the health properties of the smoothie itself. What they did not show is that polyphenols in general are destroyed or that the nutritional or health properties of the smoothie are changed in any appreciable way. In fact, from the data in the paper and just a little bit of knowledge about the effect of temperature on enzyme kinetics, the most likely interpretation is that as long as you drink your smoothie cold and within the first 10 minutes, there won't be much change at all in the polyphenol content. So having said all that, I don't think it's a great idea to add bananas to your smoothie anyway. Um, personally, I love the taste of bananas, especially frozen, but I rarely eat them. And I rarely eat them because bananas are essentially Snickers bars masquerading as fruit. <laughs> I wouldn't put them in my smoothie because they're not a particularly healthy food, and they can definitely be unhealthy for many people, especially those who have a metabolic imbalance or prediabetes. So more generally, if you are a smoothie person, I'd say you really ought to carefully examine how many calories and in particular the amount of simple sugars there are in your favorite smoothie recipe and just make sure you aren't shooting yourself in the nutritional foot, so to speak. Probably most importantly, this whole thing has led some people to believe that they shouldn't eat healthy fruits like avocados and blueberries because those fruits are also high in this enzyme polyphenol oxidase that bananas are high in. And that's just nonsense. Please, please don't let this type of bad science communication keep you from eating healthy, wholesome foods. Both avocados and blueberries are fantastic food choices. And then finally, please keep in mind that any random person can buy a lab coat from Surplus, record a 60-second video about science. That doesn't make them credible, and it doesn't make them a scientist. Okay, let's see what the study actually shows. And again, title of the paper is Impact of Polyphenol Oxidase on the Bioavailability of Flavin-3 Alls in Fruit Smoothies, a Controlled Single-Blinded Crossover Study. And it was published in the journal Food and Function, which is a journal of the Royal Society of Chemistry. Okay, so there are essentially four claims from the video that we need to evaluate. Claim number one. Fruits and vegetables are high in polyphenol compounds, and those compounds are good for you. So that's mostly true. It is definitely true that many fruits and vegetables are high in polyphenols, and there is evidence that a diet high in polyphenols is associated with health benefits, or at least better health outcomes. But the extent to which these benefits come directly from the polyphenols, in my opinion, is likely massively overstated. Um, it turns out that diets high in polyphenols are also high in fruits and vegetables. And the health benefits mostly come from the fact that you are eating a nutritious, high-fiber diet and not eating Big Macs all day. So I'm very doubtful that polyphenols in the diet themselves are a big driver of the health benefits associated with a diet high in fruits and vegetables. Okay, Claim number two Bananas are high in an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase that destroys polyphenols. Again, that's kind of half true. 
So bananas are absolutely high in polyphenol oxidase compared to other fruits and vegetables. And we'll show some of that data in a couple of minutes. It's also true that if allowed to act for long enough, the polyphenol oxidase will convert at least some classes of polyphenols into quinones or other types of bioactive molecules. Polyphenol oxidase doesn't really destroy polyphenols so much as convert them into other bioactive molecules. And again, whether this is good or bad from a health benefits perspective is unclear. Um, there's really no evidence here that it's a negative in terms of the health properties of your smoothie. There's nothing in the paper to suggest that. Okay. Claim number three, the study showed that grinding up bananas in your smoothie gets rid of the polyphenols. This is incorrect. So what the study actually showed is that if you leave a blended banana in your smoothie at room temperature for an hour, it will likely convert at least one class of polyphenols into something else. And they didn't measure what else. So that's really what the paper showed. Um, and then number four, Therefore, you should not put bananas in your smoothie. That may be the correct conclusion, although for the wrong reason. Again, no evidence here that polyphenol oxidase dependent oxidation of polyphenols from ground up bananas reduces any potential benefits from other fruits and vegetables in your smoothie. Whether you should put bananas in your smoothie in the first place because bananas are high in simple sugars and will in fact cause a massive glucose sp glucose spike in many people, that's a maybe a better reason not to put bananas in your smoothie. Okay, so now let's dive into the paper. So the first thing to understand here is there is an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase that in the presence of oxygen can oxidize certain polyphenols. And in really to be precise, Polyphenol oxidase is a class of enzymes. There are multiple different proteins that can carry out this kind of a chemical reaction of basically oxidizing polyphenols in the presence of high oxygen. Okay, um, this chemical reaction is one of the reasons why some fruits and vegetables turn brown when they sit around for long enough, but it's a sort of a long-term reaction. So there are multiple steps here that lead to the brown pigment, including at the end, a condensation step uh, which is not necessarily dependent even on polyphenol oxidase. And it's probably that condensation step that leads to the loss of the biological activities. If there are, in fact, biological activities from the polyphenols that are important for the health benefits, it's probably that condensation step that, that leads to the loss of that activity. But even that's a little bit speculative. Okay. Second thing to understand is, is, again, polyphenol oxidase doesn't really destroy polyphenols. It modifies them into other classes of bioactive molecules, generally quinones, although probably there are some other classes as well. Um, and again, the idea that those molecules are less beneficial from a health perspective is plausible. I think there's some evidence to support it, but really hasn't been well established. And certainly nothing in this study would indicate or demonstrate any loss of health benefits from this reaction. Okay, so now let's get into the paper.